Among the videos offered by Medward, most of them of short duration, are included two, one focused on sleep and the other one on narcotics. They are closely related and offer a pathway toward further short videos concerned with alcohol. The notions concerning sleep are most important and therefore complex. And the same is true for nightmares and narcotics. However, since they are known since antiquity, it is provocative that the notions we inherit through civilizations did not emphasize particularly a connection with suicides. But there is a change. With the advent of medical sciences and synthesis of opioids, which are legally available and cheap enough to be widely available, the situation has changed and there is an epidemic of suicide as well as national growing rates of death associated with overdoses of opioids. So this brings us to the domain of Narcissus and we'll explain what has Narcissus to do with narcotics. And there is another dimension which is the for-profit business. Many individuals who own corporations have amassed fortunes promoting the use of opioids for personal gain or otherwise. We can start with sleep and a second video will follow concerned with nightmare and narcotics. This short video is inspired by a magnificent representation of a somnolent Madonna with an infant that appears asleep. It is a creation of Bernardino Luini. And this short presentation is about sleep and eventually about narcotics. We stress here notions and images that can be expressed in medical terminology, that is English medical terminology, with an emphasis on visual, verbal, and written components. This is a conduit to other presentations concerned with alcohol, since alcohol is, in a way, a narcotic. This short video is one of a series presented by Omninet Medward and its contents are largely extracted from clinical eye-openers of Pandora Word Box companion websites. You are most welcome to visit these websites for further information and the links are shown below the icons. The speaker is myself, Vladimir Wereleki, a pediatrician, geneticist, and teratologist, and you can find more about me by visiting Wikipedia through the link shown below my name. So let's start, take a good look. And first let's define what we mean by sign and signal. We look, that doesn't mean we see. What we see, we say, I see a sign, this and a sign, that and another sign. In this magnificent representation of a Madonna with an infant, is she asleep? Is the infant asleep? Are both showing a sign of sleep? And if she was asleep, would she be able to hold an infant or she would let it fall? If the infant is asleep, would he be able to hold that arm up or would it be so flaccid or hypotonic that it would drop. And what is the signal here? Signal is something we understand. Once we understand the sign, we know what is the signal transmitted by this sign. So, what is the signal in this image? For one, 
it signals that the mother is not fully asleep. She may be somnolent. She may be daydreaming, but she's not asleep. She did not fall asleep. The infant is somnolent indeed. But does the infant convey a signal of sleep? You decide. But don't mix the concept of sign with signal. Sign is objective. Signal is hypo-objective. It is a hypothesis. It's not a fact. It is an interpretation. And clusters of word can also inspire a better understanding of the signs and signals. If you slip and slide and fall, you may fall asleep. Are we falling asleep? Are we sliding into sleep through a step of somnus or in between somnolence? Or if we're not fully asleep, we may walk while asleep and we become ambulatory like sonambulism. But where is all of this coming? Who was somnus? So gradually we can build in a list of terms, of notions, of ideas that we would like to know more. And we are going to be accumulating a list like that to explore it further. All cultures and languages reflect a fascination with the phenomenon of somnolence transforming into sleep and share common word roots as well as visual representations, that is symbolism. And in this case, we speak of the identical twins, Hypnos, Thanatos, which deserve particular attention. One example of this generalization is the Ukrainian language, where son means a dream, spad means to fall, and spati means to fall asleep. This is true of other languages as well. So here we have sort of a family history of symbolisms. Nix or Nox or Night, Hypnos, Thanatos, and their children, Hum, Somnus, Morpheus, Fantasos, Favitor. So why to mention this pedigree? Simply because we invoke it every time we talk. Nix or Nox or Nightmare, Nocturne, like some musical pieces by Chopin, or Noctambulists, those who walk while asleep. And in medicine, we know of noxious drugs or Noxa being what causes disease. In English, then, the notion of Nix implies negation, rejection. What it means is that during the night there is negation of sunlight. In German, Nicht means no, and in Ukrainian, Nietzsche is night. These are examples that one should pay attention to and provide a basis to respect the roots of our nomenclature or glossary. Remembering these roots helps, again, to memorize ideas, notions, and glossaries. Hypnos is temporary sleep. It's like hypnosis or a hypnotic agent by which we often may to imply correctly or wrongly of drugs such as narcotics or in quotes, close quotes, sedatives. What do we mean by sedatives? And if we look at the root of the notion sedative, it means to put down, sit down, seat, sedentary. And in Spanish, indeed, that is also asserted by the word sentado, therefore sedentary. And in Ukrainian, which is clearly unrelated to Latin or Spanish, likewise, sediti means to sit, to become sedentary, to be calm. And now that we became sedated by the previous explanations, we can be unsettled by the notions of thanatos or death. 
Sonatas, the identical twin of Hypnos, also induces sleep, but the permanent kind, the deadly one, the lethal lethargy, Thanatos. And we know the word euthanasia, we know of teratothanasia, but this is something that more physicians should know about. That is the spontaneous death of an ongoing pregnancy. In other words, spontaneous abortion or spontaneous pregnancy loss. What we call in ordinary parlance, miscarriage. And then we have other relatives of Hypnos and Thanatos cared for Nix, who was their babysitter. The Somnus, for somnolence or somnambulism, and Morpheus, the shaper of dreams, whom we remember every time we mention morphine or any time we talk about morphology or dysmorphology. So here we have a fuller panorama of what we have been talking about. And with an addition of fantasos, from whom we get fantasy and hallucinations, and phobitor, from whom we get fear or phobia, subjects that we will leave for later. Her husband was so shocked when he found her dead in her bed that he summoned urgently Anthony van Dyck, the then so famous painter, who then produced this image. Thanatos can induce permanent sleep. He is, after all, the one who pays all the mortals the final visit. Teratothanasia is a scientific term in medical parlance to denote spontaneous death before birth. That is, pregnancy losses of embryos or fetuses. In this screen is to remind viewers that everything we present in these videos generally is extracted from companion websites, in this instance, Pandora Word Box. In Pandora Word Box, there is this image, Hypnos or Thanatos, who are twins. And there are many links leading to a variety of perspectives related to this notion. Therefore, we encourage you to visit the companion websites if you like to enjoy further explanations. As stated earlier, our videos emphasize the roots of notions because that helps memorization. So here is the Madonna and Infant by Luini, and here is Luini himself, not very well known, but an extraordinarily magnificent painter. Why is this considered a prototype that is unique of Madonna Infant? is because she is not asleep. He barely may be asleep because if this is the infant Jesus, he knows his fate and that may become a nightmare. And so knowing the fate of her son, this may also be a nightmare. And nightmares with open eyes are hard to confront. We also showed an image of a kitten by this man, his outer portrait, famous painter as well. And that brings to mind what is on his mind, what is in his memory, and what is in his psyche when he painted his wife. Certainly, at his age, some of his memory is lost. But he did remember this kitten. What the mind forgets, amnesia, the psyche may remember. This may be in his psyche, the tenderness, the somnolence, the dreaming. And we can complete this profile by underscoring that what memory may forget, the psyche may remember. But either way, we all have daydreams. Those dreams very often are attributed mythologically to fantasies. These are our fantasies. 
this prospective mother had fantasies, this prospective father had hopes and fantasies, and this array of memories may be real or hallucinations. They may be conducive to delirium, phobos or phobia. These are concepts enhanced by examining the impacts of narcotics. They work in this particular constellation, in this ecology. They disrupt the interrelationship between these factors. It cannot be disputed that sleep is essential. It's essential for life. And its importance impacts most aspects of the physiology of the human body. Insomnia is one of the major manifestations of civilized man. And the pathology of sleep is extensive, not just insomnia. With aging, we require less sleep. Deprivation of sleep, that is extreme insomnia induced by torturers, as we hear very often in the news, is thanatophoric, meaning is death bringing. And indeed, life is a dream. So said this dramatist, one of the greatest dramatist of the world, Pedro Calderón de la Barca. You can stop the motion and read what's written in these screens leisurely, but I will take the liberty to quote some of it. For he said that, what is life but a frenzy? What is life but an illusion? It's worth remembering that. Life without hope, life without fantasy, life without dream may not be worth living. And with the advent of scientific medicine, we know this Sigmund Freud, a neurologist that we could call dreamologist. He analyzed dreams. He induced his dreams with cocaine and became an addict. He also was an addict to cigars, which eventually killed him by inducing a cancer of the throat. He's credited for having called the attention that cocaine is a local anesthetic. So every time you go to a dentist and they give you a shot of novocaine, think Freud and the physician who discovered and perfected that process later. So we have touched upon many, many concepts, including novocaine. And we suggest that by repeating references to these notions, you're going to remember them thoroughly and probably forever. And there are several modes of explorations you can rely upon. Repeat the view of this video or engage in our four manners of exploring Pandora Word Box. One is to look at short definitions as here, sleep, is the cyclic relative inactivity, et cetera, et cetera. Or look at word ideas, the roots, why do we speak the way we speak? There are many choices here. For instance, if we choose sleep and slumber, you're going to find details where this originates from, like sit and be sedentary. There are overviews that gives you the cultural perspective of sleep and slumber dormant and dormitory and somnus and somnolent and so forth, and narcotic indeed and narcolepsy, and a galaxy of terms that illuminate each other and therefore modify and amplify each other. And rather than explaining this complex process, I rather show it to you. So take a look at the next video. So we are going to explore Pandora word box to augment our perspectives and to facilitate memorization of what we have been talking about. So we need to find the galaxies. So, and in there, we said we were going to explore sleep. So let's go to sleep. And 
as you could see, different terms are being illuminated because they mutually influence each other. Like in any galaxy, all these planetoids are floating around and their magnetic forces determine their particular orbits. And we have here a menu of seven members of one galaxy. And of course, we start with sleep. That's how we got into it. So if we click on it, these are active links and we end up in Pandora Word Box in a word exploration of sleep, reversible death, rest of body and mind, suspended consciousness. Those are fundamental ideas implicit in sleep. And I'm not gonna read it for you, you could do that. Let's go back. And if we click on slip, we should end up somewhere. But the point is, it doesn't matter where we end. We could explore Pandora word box from here on, go up, up a little bit. One, and we could, let's say, click uh, aphorisms. And we switch our attention away from sleep and slip, and we go anywhere we want. But for the interest of brevity, I'm going to stick to slip, although here I could follow 174 different directions. It depends on what you want. Let's go back. And we then can explore this as an overview. And in this overview, let's go down. There is a broad perspective of how to best grasp the implications of sleep. And you may or may not be interested. That's up to you. And you can click on the images, do whatever you want. Let's go back. And then, of course, we could click on, let's say, morphine. And in morphine, we end up in another uh, word and we explore. And what is Morpheus? It's a dream shaper. And what's morphine? Well, it's something that Sir Turner in 1893 purified and called it the shaper of dreams. He was educated man. Today, probably some graduate from some university will call it compound 117BXZ dollar signs. I got rich or whatever. Let's go back. And we have these clicks, but once you get to Pandora, you are totally free to follow whatever direction you want. And before we leave this, let's click on dream. Let's see what the dream may be. And here is Napoleon II. Napoleon II, every Englishman is going to tell you didn't exist. So who is this Le Roi de Rome? Well, that happens to be the child of Napoleon I. He didn't live long. They didn't take care of him. Let's go back. So that is all. I hope you enjoyed it. And now we are ready to continue with the presentation concerned with sleep. Let's go. And now I would like to say a few general words about medical terminology, illuminations, clinical sense and sensitivities. We intend to emphasize medical culture along with notions of teratology and dysmorphology. It takes many formats to do so. In these presentations, we have emphasized terminology in the context of visual science, alluded to semiology, that is the study of, the study of science. We emphasized medical English as the lingua franca in clinical medicine. And we touched upon in many opportunities on aspects of medical humanities. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you explore our websites where there are other types and styles of presentation indicated here. In the interest of brevity, I do not describe them, but you can find full descriptions by visiting this link. After a pause of about 40 seconds, 
The short video concerning nightmare and narcotic will start. If you prefer, you can leave now and return at any time later. The link to this short video will be shown either below this screen or at the end of this particular presentation.